Pad love with Pat's two cents. Saints, let's stop riding every wave. Trend goes here, we go there. Trend goes there, we go there. Stop following the example of monkey see, monkey do. Just because they're doing it across the street does not mean you have to do it. You have to establish your own relationship with God. Stop being a copycat Christian. And I'm not saying it to be insulting, but that usually comes from people who have not yet experienced God one-on-one. And they're living out their salvation in a religious, lawful lifestyle, a legalized lifestyle, when Jesus called us to grace. Now listen to this. This is Ephesians chapter 4, 12. All right. That we hence, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Okay, but speaking the truth in love, verse 15, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, I say that to say this. I can't tell you how many people get caught up in legalism. Jesus said it is by faith. This walk is by faith. We know we're in the dispensation of grace which means where there is love, God is love, there is liberty. Galatians itself says, do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says that we're called unto liberty. Now, what ends up happening is no matter what Jesus did, there were always the scribes and Pharisees that wanted him to toe the line in the law. The Bible says, Moses said, this is the way it's done. This is our Jewish tradition. This is how we handle things. We wash our hands. We do this. We do that. And Jesus said, you're like ravening wolves. You sit there and you nitpick. You strain at a gnat, but you swallow a camel. But you're choking on a gnat. And you worry about the do's and don'ts of the things that don't even matter. But the weightier matters. You're like dead man's bones. You're clean on the outside. You're polished. You got it going on. You got all the grooves going. You got the beat. You got the rhythm. But you have no substance. You're filthy inside. And see what a lot of un, a lot of immature Christians will do is they'll follow this trend. They'll follow that trend. People do this. It's like monkey see, monkey do. You've been calling your Savior Jesus. You've been calling him Jesus the Christ, your Messiah. Somebody else says, no, 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 no. You must call us Hamashiach. You must call him Yeshua. You must call this. You have to call God Yahweh. You have to call God Jehovah. You have to call God Yahuwah and all these different. None of us are calling it right in the first place. It's another language for goodness sake. Call him father. He's your spiritual father. He's okay with that. I don't have to worry about pronouncing my father's name. His name is John. But if it was some complicated name, all I got to do is call him daddy. So you can get caught up in semantics all you want. But all the semantics will do is entangle you in a web of bondage and legalism that has nothing to do with your relationship with God or Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, none of that. It will have nothing to do with that. What you will be doing inadvertently, ultimately, is pleasing man. But once you please man on this end, then somebody over here is not pleased. So now you got to please them. By the time you get through, you're being blown about with every wind of doctrine. You're blown here, you're blown there. The next minute, you're way over here. The next minute, you can't go without your head covered. The next minute, you have to go with your head uncovered. I mean, it just gets ridiculous after a while. Jesus did not call us to toe the line. 
He called us to freedom. When you are in Christ, when you have a relationship with your heavenly Father through Christ Jesus, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and you connect with God one-on-one, -on -one, you're no longer trying to do religious ritual ceremonies, pomp and ceremony. You're not going through all these ritualistic calisthenics. You don't have to do that. When you come home and your parents are sitting there at the dining room table, do you have to stand there and bow 10 times and say things 15 times and unlock the door and say, oh, most mighty so-and-so, may I please enter? Simon says, may I please enter the table and sit down and have dinner with thou, mother and father, honorable ones. Do you have to go through that? No. Relationship with God is heart to heart, spirit to spirit, mind to mind, gut to gut. It's not a bunch of religious do's and don'ts. The Holy Spirit quickens your spirit. And you automatically start lining up with the ways of God because you want to. You're doing it out of love, not out of obligation, not because we have to. No, you're doing it because you want to. When I obeyed my parents, I did it because I wanted to. When I was a little kid and I was immature, I did it because I had to. Because I didn't like booty whoopings. I had to. But as I got older and appreciated them more, then the things I did were out of a mature mindset. I'm doing this because I love you. When I took care of my father till he died, I did it out of love, not out of obligation, not out of guilt. Oh, if I don't do it, what are people going to think? What are people going to say about me? No. No, I'm going to make my father love me by taking care of him. I already knew that man loved me. My father loved everything about me. My father was a wonderful father. He was committed. He loved me unconditionally. Whether I took care of him or did not, I knew he loved me. Now, I could call my father all kind of funny names because we had a relationship. We had humor. We clowned with each other. Our humor was a form of affection. He would call me all kind of funny names. I would call him all kind of funny names. He wasn't insulted because I didn't call him John Love. No. I would call him Knucklehead. I would call him Funny Face. I would call him some other names. Y'all would probably say, no, 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 no. You didn't call your father that. But then he called me those names. So it was all funny. He would call me uh, droopy lips and all kind of little silly names. We played. We clowned with each other. But I still had the fear and respect of my father. I knew not to cross a line, even as an adult. However, relationship meant we did not to ha we didn't have to get everything just right in order for the relationship to remain intact no sometimes the relationship even grew deeper when things went kind of kind of screwy because we worked it out together see when you're in relationship with god you work things out together with him you cooperate with him with his ways with his word with his holy spirit with the way he moves in your heart you cooperate with how he quickens your conscience you cooperate with him you consult with him you acknowledge him in all your ways so he can direct your path it's relationship no you don't get it all right you never will so stop trying to toe the line and stop trying to tie everybody else and bind them down to rituals and rules and ceremonialisms and all that. Don't do that to each other. That's what Christ came to free us from. Why would you go back into bondage when Jesus died and suffered so you could be free? Think about that. God bless you. I hope you got what I'm saying. 
This is not an insulting or an indicting message. It's just pleading with you to just enjoy your relationship with God and freedom, humor, love, trust, peace. Just be who you are. He's not worried about how you pronounce his name. God is not that small. He's a big God, real big.